Well, let's get started. Thank you for your patience, everyone. I know we're a couple minutes late here. Just wanted to give everyone a chance. So D3M, what does it stand for? Um, so really D3M stands for Design, Document, Deliver, and Manage. And our goal here is really to, to give you guys a tool that allows you to basically document your networks, any complex networks you're working on, or even simple ones, um, and be able to not only document that, deliver it to your customer, but also manage it with post sales. Um, so you'll see kind of how, as I go through this, that, that that's something that we try to try to think about in every feature we release and we really feel like RackView is something that, that helps complete that kind of cycle. And um, so the agenda today will be going over uh, a solutions overview. So just very quickly, a two, three minute, you know, this is again, a reminder how everything works and, and how it works together. And we'll be going through a Rack Diagrams demo, which is why all of you signed up and are here today. Um, and we'll also be looking at upcoming Rack Diagram features. So I will give you a bit of a preview of what's uh, of what's up and coming. Um, and I'll also show you a couple other floor plan features and upcoming features, um, just general ones that are coming as well. And of course, we'll end with a question period at the very end. We'll be answering all the questions we can. Um, so a bit about Teldio. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but just to give you guys, for those of you that are new to the tool, a bit of a history. So we were founded in 2008. Um, we we're kind of born in the tour radio industry where we developed applications um, to help connect the radio world with um, you know the rest of the world, essentially, basically turning you know radios into smart radios and um, things like telephone or interconnect, man down, and so on and so forth. Um, we saw that there was a bit of a need for um, a bit of a need for um, oh. We, there was a need for um, basically being able to document networks. Um, so we created this app internally, um, and a lot of you started asking us, well, what is this? Can I use it? Um, and so on and so forth. Um, very, very popular. And in 2015, we created a dedicated division for D3M. Um, since then, our team's been growing, and we're really, really excited um, on what's to come. Um, some of the features we released are things like the quote tool, um, as well as the, the rack view, and so on and so forth. Is there an issue there, Chris? Um, everybody, just let us know if uh, if you're having any trouble hearing us. Um, I, I just got a report there that uh, the sound was cutting out a bit sometimes. So just just let us know. You can let us know in the messaging there. I'm uh, I'm looking at it there. Just let us know. Awesome. All right. So we'll keep going here. So what is D3M? Um, basically, what D3M is is a cloud-based application, um, which basically allows you to design and document your networks, like I was saying. Um, really, the whole what's central to this this app is that it's a secure cloud application. It allows you to collaborate in real time with everyone else, um, and with that real time collaboration, you can you know edit projects with your colleagues, work in real time, and share them with customers as well. But what's really cool about it is as you design your network, we automatically create other things that you would need. Um, things like automatically creating your fleet map or your inventory, um, creating your proposal, your statement of work, um, and so on and so forth, creating your quotes, your bill of materials. And this still says coming soon. I probably should have updated that. Um, I forgot there, but basically your rack diagrams as well. So you'll see that today. Really excited there. So, I mean, you guys know this way better than I do, um, but essentially, you know, when you look at the deployment of a network, um, you know, you go through the different phases, you know, going from pre-sales to proposal delivery to the installation and post-sales support. Um, really, our goal at D3M is to help you with all these different stages and give you the tools and the documentation you need um, in order to be able to kind of, you know, better manage those processes, right? And, and help you stay organized and so on and so forth, um, cut costs and so on. Um, what we've uh, what we've actually been able to do here is, you know, by adding the rack diagram feature, we're really excited and we feel that these are kind of the different stages where it will help you. Um, so things like at the network architecture design phase. Um, so being able to, you know, design a rack diagram will help you there. And um, the proposed communication solution stage. So when you actually want to propose, send a delivery proposal to your customer and um, being able to actually give a rack diagram with that. And then comes the install. If you have a senior tech that actually designed the rack and showed how the physical layout of your diagram should look, and um, being able to actually give that to your junior installer, so when he goes on site, he can actually go ahead and know exactly what to do without you needing to go on site, for example. And of course, with post sale support. Um, if you think about it, I mean, two years down the line, when there's an issue, if the customer calls you, I um, mean, you want them to just reboot a server and like that, you can actually know exactly how it was deployed, where it was deployed, and um, what the configuration settings were, and be able to um, be able to uh, essentially troubleshoot that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's really how we look at everything here. Every feature we push, we try to help you with this, this kind of process and, and keeping that loop closed. So, so without further ado, um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into, into the tool itself and, and show you guys how this feature works, um, how to use it um, and why we're so excited about it. So here I am. Um, I've just gone ahead and logged in into D3M into my account. And what I'm seeing is essentially a listing of, of all the different projects that I personally have access to. Um, so I'm logged into my own account here, Christopher Sisto. 
Um, and I can see all the different projects that I've either created, so I'm the owner of them, um, or projects that have been shared with me and people have given me edit privileges or share or, or uh, view privileges. Um, so that's the idea there. Again, it's a live collaborative tool that's stored in the cloud, so you can access your information from anywhere at any time. Um, so I'll go into this project that I set up here. Really, all I did was give it so far a title, a name, an address, and so on and so forth. Um, but we'll go ahead and load it up here. So for those of you that are familiar with D3M, you're going to be very familiar with this screen. Um, we kind of start with our topology diagram. And what I mean by topology is essentially a diagram that allows you to create the logical layout of your network. How are things going to be connected? And this is what we've had in D3M since the very beginning. It's the most important part. But of course, the new piece right here is the rack diagrams that I'll be showing you. Um, again, I mentioned this earlier, but what's really important to remember in D3M is that as you update one piece of the app, as you update the topology or the rack or the inventory, or your quote or anything else or your documents, it will automatically update everything else. Um, and that's something that we would feel really strongly about um, because we're trying to save you time and limit errors, costly mistakes that you might have in your process. Um, so that's the idea there. So I'll go ahead and start kind of building out a network so that if we start with our topology diagram, we'll be able to auto generate a rack of sorts. Um, so I'll show you what I mean there. So on the left-hand side here, I have a whole bunch of different icons. Um, we're constantly trying to improve these and add more. You'll notice that we added quite a few extra um, icons that will relate back to your racks, things like patch panels and so on and so forth. Um, but if I keep scrolling down here, you'll also see that I have a lot of manufacturer icon libraries. So for those of you that are in the tour or industry, um, you'll notice that there are Hytera, Icom, Kenwood, Motorola Solutions libraries. If you want any of those, just let us know. We're happy to enable them for you as long as you're a certified reseller of that brand. Um, but basically, just to show you here, um, we have you know all the different Motorola radios. I can show you all the different Kenwood radios and so on and so forth. Um, and I'll start kind of just drawing out a network. So if I drag out, for example, this MTR3000, and again, I apologize for those of you that are very familiar with the app, um, this may be a little sort of redundant for you in the sense that you know this, but just to kind of show quick, very quickly how this works, when I drag it out, the first thing you notice is that it has the actual ports that exist on that device. If I switch to my icon mode here, you'll see that it actually looks like the Motorola Peter that, that, that you would sell um, if you're a Motorola reseller. And if I double click on it, what you'll see is that it shows all the different properties and settings you might want to store about that device. Um, I can decide to display some of the information. I can store some of it, but not actually, so you know, whatever it might be. I can store it there, but decide not to display it, and so on and so forth. Um, if I add, for example, a um, duplexer here on, on the right, and I want to start connecting it, um, if I toggle here, you'll be able to see that when I drag out this TX, it automatically connects to the right port. So very quickly, you can kind of start designing your network. Um, now, that's not the goal of today's webinar. I know a lot of you on the line are like, I know this, I've done this 100 times. So I'll go ahead and delete this, and I'm going to use one of my favorite features, which is the icon bundles, just to get us started. So we'll pretend that we built out this full network. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my personal library here. I'll take just a second here. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and drag out um, a bundle that I've pre-prepared. So what you'll notice here, these bundles are very, very useful. And um, for those of you that are interested on in knowing how to create them, it's super simple. You would select a group of your project, a group of items within your project, right click and say, save bundle to my library. And once you've done that, you can do exactly what I just did. You can save these sort of pre-built pieces of your network and um, save them over to your icon bundle so that next time, you know, you want to start a new project, it's as easy as what I just did there, right? So here we are, you know, imagine that I've just spent the 10 minutes to create this. Um, looks pretty good. And now what we're going to do is, now that we're done the logical view of our network, we're going to move on to the rack and build our rack based off of this logical view of our network that we created. So I switch over to my rack view here. And what you're going to notice, obviously, is that I don't have a rack yet because I haven't created it. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is click on rack view. And there we go. I've created sort of my first rack. I'm actually going to add two racks because I know I'm going to need that many. Um, so I've just added them. And the first thing you might notice when, when I created those racks is that by default, they're 42 use. Very simple. You can easily just go ahead and change the, the size. You'll notice that that size kind of shows up at the top. And when you release, it goes away because you can still see it on the left-hand side here. Um, by default, all the new racks that you add will be 42 U's, but super easy to change if you happen to have a half rack at 19 or whatever else it might be. And um, we just went with the most standard, sort of the most common thing that you would normally have. Um, so just like in the other, in the topology diagram that you're used to, you can rename this. You know, I can call this, for example, rack number one. I'll go ahead and rename this one over here and call it rack number two. Um, actually, notice here that I double click on the item instead of the name, so it opened up the properties panel, um, which I can also edit values on. We can say, for example, that the internal width on here is 19 inches, the weight capacity is 1,500 pounds, um, and I can decide to display those on the canvas. So when I close out here, you'll see that that shows up. Um, we gave you sort of some, some good defaults, but of course you can add whatever properties you might want to to this. Um, whatever information is important for you to know about that rack, maybe that it's customer owned or not. 
um, you can do that as well. Um, there's a question that just came in um, asking, what about 21 inch racks? Um, absolutely. I mean, really what you would do in that case is you would just show that it's 21 inches. Um, we haven't visually shown a difference. We, we actually spoke with quite a few of our customers who said that it doesn't really matter to them if it looks, you know, two inches wider or whatnot. Really, it's just a matter of, of knowing that visually. So in this case, you would just change the property to show, well, it's a 21 inch rack. That's a 19 inch. And, and that's kind of the idea there. So that that's sort of what, what we went about that way. But if anyone feels strongly the other way that it should actually look, you know, 10% bigger, um, that's something we could definitely look into. For the time being, we just went ahead and said, you know, this is good enough to give you a sense. If you wanted it to stand out more in any way, you can always add things like a text box. Um, and you could really clarify that if that was very important to you. Um, you know, it's really up to you how you design your, oops, I can't type today. It's really up to you how you decide to design this. But let's say, you know, 24, you want it to be really big and clear. You can do that as well. You could label it that way if you wanted to. Um, so that's the idea there. So here we go. We've kind of gotten started. Um, now, here's a very, very important part of RackU. So we call this your project inventory sync tool. And the idea here is that we're trying to make sure, as with everything else in D3M, that everything stays in sync. Um, obviously, we can't guess for you what you want to put on a rack and what you don't. For example, a mobile radio is something that, Often you might not put on a rack, but sometimes you might want to, um, or things like antennas or and so on and so forth. Um, so the idea is that we basically give you, when you're done your topology diagram, and this works both ways, you can start with your rack and go to your topology, but when you switch from your topology to your rack, you'll notice that it automatically switches you to this inventory sync tool. And what this shows me is a listing of all the different items that have been included in my topology diagram that I have yet to address for my rack diagram. So for example, this mag mount antenna isn't something that I want to put on here, so I would just say ignore. I'd move on to my next one. Let me go ahead and add that monitor. I can resize it. So what you notice is that it takes up that space. Right now it's taking up six U's. I can I can decide exactly what height you know that monitor takes depending on the model I might have. Um, I'll you know keep dragging out some items. So we'll say that the application server goes there. Um, as far as you know recording software, obviously I'm not going to put that on the rack. It's more of a logical item, so I'm going to ignore that. And you just kind of keep moving like that, right? So adding different items. I do apologize if something does not look. I'm technically sound. Please don't get mad at me. I'm not a radio technician. Um, <laughs> you guys know a lot more about this stuff than I do. Just kind of want to show you what, what we can do here. So I'm just dragging out the different repeaters. Notice that I can easily kind of modify all those settings and kind of organizing things the way I, I think they should go. I'll throw in some filter cans here. There we go. And you can see how very quickly we can kind of address all the different items. And because I've looked at it from the logical standpoint before, this becomes very easy. I don't have to double check my inventory. It's being done for me automatically, right? Um, so very quickly, I can kind of get all this together. There we go. Looks good. And if you want to move everything up a slot, just select it all very simple. Shift it up. Probably should have left more room there. There we go. I'll shift these three up a bit. I apologize. I'm, I'm a little a little bit of a stickler when it comes to things looking good. It's my marketing side, I guess. <laughs> there we go. So that looks pretty good. We'll keep adding a couple more items. So obviously radios, portables are not things I'm going to put on my rack. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore those. Um, I want to put the capacity max server here. And now what I'm left with is a few items that I want to ignore all these. Actually, the control station in this case, because we'll say it's tied to the application, it has to go there. But everything else left, I want to actually ignore. You can just quickly hit the ignore all button at the end. So you could also, instead of ignoring things one by one, you can also just go through the things you do want to add and just hit ignore all at the end. So there you have it. Um, if you notice, I'll just delete this just to show you. If you notice, right now it's showing me a little red dot here. This is basically telling me, well, you still have something to sync, right? Something's out of sync. The second that I drag that out, notice how that red dot goes away. It's very, very subtle, but it's meant to be helpful to you. If you, if you don't like to use it, again, you can ignore it. You don't have to use the sync inventory sync tool. But, you know, with the research we did and the customers we spoke to, this felt like something very useful um, that allows you to keep things very much organized. Um, so if I switch back to my topology, of course, now I know that everything's in sync. I've included the things I need to on this diagram and included the things I need to on this diagram. Now, one of the questions some of you might be having right now is, so what about something like um, a power supply? Um, I don't really need that on my topology diagram, but, you know, I want to add it on my rack diagram. No problem. So you can still access your, your organization library here. So if I switch to my organization library, um, I can go, for example, add a power supply, drag it out here. Um, you know, let's say that's a 3U power supply. I'll add another one here. So we have all sorts of different items that you can add on this view that might not be included on the other. I'll add a power strip here for my, you know, to power all my different devices. Um, add one up here. 
and so on and so forth, right? So you can really organize this any way you want. Um, if you want to search for an item, so again, we've added quite a few different items like patch panels and so on and so forth. Um, if you want to search for more items, you can also use our search function. So I'll go here and say, for example, I want to search for a pull-out keyboard. Let's see if we have one of those. We should. There we go, slide out keyboard. I found it right here, so I can drag that out. Um, and I'll put that right below the monitor so we can control that application server. Perfect. Um, and so that's the idea. Of course, you can always access the different settings to understand, you know, what's where um, and so on and so forth. And everything stays in sync between this and the topology diagram. So now I've added all these different items in my rack view. But if I go back to my topology, you can imagine that all these things that we added here, there it's going to tell me now that it's out of sync, right? Because all these items have been included in my other diagram, but haven't been included in this diagram. Well, in this case, none of these are items that I actually want to include here, and they're not, they don't relate to the logical view of my diagram. So I'm just going to go ahead and ignore them all. You could, if, if you wanted to put the power supplies there, you're welcome to. It's up to you and how you like to create your diagram, but we give you kind of that option. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit ignore all, confirm, and there you have it. I've basically synced my two diagrams. I've shown you guys how you can start from your rack view, keep things in sync, um, and kind of organize things. There, there was, was there any questions there, Chris, so far? Uh, yeah, so uh, follow up to the 21 inch rack. There was uh, this comment here. Uh, typical uh, typical gear is 19. If a rack is 21, you'll need parts to adjust. Okay. Um, yeah. So th that's a great point. Um, I mean, that that really comes down to what you might want to do to 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 add those parts to adjust. Is you might want to include them. Um, you could potentially include them as as an additional part. Um, to the actual device itself. So if you're using our code tool, for example, what you can do, and I'll show you this quickly. Um, so if I double click, for example, on this repeater right now, I could go ahead and add a part to it. Um, so right now, I don't have the coding enabled on all these devices. That's not what I was planning on showing today. Um, but I could add, for example, the repeater, right? I could add this part to my device. And then I could find, you know, the 21 inch, um, you know, part that I would want to attach to that and basically attach both parts so that when I go to my actual bill of materials after and export that with, you know, my quote and export the bill of materials, it would actually show up then. So th that's a way you could manage it. And um, the other way you could manage it is you could also, if you wanted to, create um, a version of your repeater that's a 19 inch and a version of your repeater that's a 21 inch and just specify that part. So there's different ways you can manage that. Um, so yeah, there was another question there. Do we have a DC power, distribu DC power distribution? Um, I'm not 100% clear on what you mean by that. If, it, if it's an icon that you mean, um, we definitely can add that to the library. We're very happy to. If you guys have any things that are missing at any point, you can always click on the chat button here um, and, and ask to, to add in any icons. Um, so if that's what you meant, then please feel free to ask for it. If, if we don't have it, I'd have to double check here. Um, but happy to follow up with your question otherwise, Jamie. And and sorry, I'll just jump in for a second. That. Uh... It, it, just a general reminder that you always have the option of modifying existing uh, icons and yep. then saving those modified uh, to your library, Absolutely. Um, or you can create a custom icon anytime yep. you want. So there, there's always those options. Absolutely. So maybe I'll take a second just to show that. So it's a good point, Chris. Um, so take, for example, this MTR3000. If we wanted to maybe create a custom of this, I can always highlight it in the library and say create custom. And then it's basically going to bring me to the menu where I can modify that. So I could say, for example, MTR 3000, you know, with 21 inch kit, for example, I, I apologize if this doesn't make a ton of sense, but with 21 inch kit, um, I might want to add, for example, that I would add the two parts that I talked about earlier. So I would add the two quote parts, for example, so they automatically come out with it. Um, and then I'd go ahead and hit save. I don't have those parts. That's why I'm not adding them. But once it's been saved, it gets saved to my user library here. And you can see I have that new, uh, is that the one there? I'd have the new MTR3000, and um, basically, there it is, sorry, my new MTR3000 with 21-inch kit, and when I drag it out, it would automatically have that sort of description of the new parts. Um, so you can kind of modify these any way you want and, and build your own based off, even based off the company icons that we might have created for you, the Motorola library and, and so on, and Kenwood and so on and so forth. Um, so great point there. Um, the other thing that Chris mentioned is that you might want to also create your own icons. I mentioned earlier, if you want us to create icon designs, we're happy to do it and to ask a question here. But keep in mind, you can also just, you know, add your own um, custom icon. So you could actually just create one from scratch here. Oops, sorry, I had that highlighted still. Um, you can create a new icon from scratch. So as long as you don't have one selected up here, you can click new icon at any point. You click on that and you can start from scratch. So right now, you know, we have a library of a whole bunch of different icons. And that's why I was mentioning if you want, you can always ask um, ask us to design an, a new one for you. But you can also upload your own custom image. You can upload a picture of anything you found online, um, maybe a picture of the actual device. You can do that. Um, and, uh, and basically from there, create your icon 
go to the next step, add the properties, add the ports that are on there and so on and so forth. So really simple. And the really cool thing is once you've created these icons, not only are they saved to your personal library, but you can then ask, if you click here on the actual item, you can then click on here to say, I want to actually um, get this promoted to my organization library. And um, so there's a promote icon here. You click on that and it says, hey, do you want to add this to your company's library so that everyone else in your company can actually benefit from that icon? Um, so that's the idea there. Um, yeah, so that's basically a demo of Rackview. I'm going to switch back over to my PowerPoint in just a second here because I want to show you a couple more things. Some of you may be wondering, what if I want to add, for example, a shelf, or I want to add multiple items on the same row? I will show you a preview of that in just a second here. Um, but before I switch back to my to my PowerPoint, I want to just, just kind of reiterate the fact that as with everything else in D3M, when you kind of build out your network, um, everything else gets synced and set up, right? Um, I actually didn't plan to show this, but I'm thinking it's a good idea now. Um, let's say that we wanted to actually show you how the quoting works. Um, so I'm going to dra drag out, I believe this has quote parts associated, rather than associating everything one by one. Um, there, I've dragged out a secondary bundle here. Um, and just to kind of show you this, um, basically when I turn on my quote, my quote view here, um, what you'll see is that when I scroll over my icons, that all these icons have actually um, had quotes parts as associated with them. So if I double click here, we've uploaded our quote parts, which you can do very easily using a CSV file. Um, and now you can see this has actually been quoted. And the idea is that I would kind of go through, I'd look at my diagram and say, oh, you know, I've shared this with Chris, who's my technician. We're live collaborating. And Chris says, this looks technically sound, Chris, go ahead and quote it. So from here, I'd actually, um, you know, double check, okay, does every single icon in my network, have, has everything actually been overlaid with that quote symbol? Um, so if I wanted to do that, I could double click on an icon and just search for a quote, you know, portable here, for example, um, and it searches through the closest match. You can go ahead and add that, um, and basically it would keep adding all your, oh, I hit cancel there by mistake, but basically you can add all the different items um, to your actual diagram um, and make sure that everything's quoted. So once that's done, and I'll just create two quick areas here. So this areas functionality is just here to kind of show you you know, this is site one, Oops, site one. Um, I have hotel tower A and hotel tower B. So I have my three different sites laid out here. It's an infinite canvas, so you'll never run out of space. Um, I wanna show you how all this comes back together. Your rack diagram, your topology diagram, and so on and so forth. Obviously now my rack diagram is out of date because I've added all these new icons. Um, but let's just pretend we don't wanna rack any of that. I'll ignore all of it. Um, now if I switch over to my inventory, you'll notice that every single item that I've added to my actual and diagram has been added, so up here on inventory. And um, everything's added here. I can modify properties any way I want in here, and it'll update on the other side. Um, you know, earlier on the MTR 3000s, we showed that they were Motorola solutions and MTR 3000s. If we modify any of that data, it'll modify on the diagram as well. So I could write ABC just to show you. Um, it'll update it there, and so on and so forth. The next thing is my quote. So as I was saying, I dragged up that extra bundle just to show you. Because that bundle was pre-associated with parts, um, you can see that it automatically created this quote for me based on all those different parts. So it's showing that there's 93 radios that are being quoted right now. Um, I'm showing a cost of so on. Of, uh, you know, I uploaded my cost into D3M. So now it's giving me, okay, well, my estimated margin for this project is, you know, 40.7. Um, you know, my over, I can add different parts. So I could add install support or whatever else I want. Um, and basically from there, it would give me a subtotal. I can add a discount, shipping, handling, taxes, gives me a margin. Um, and I basically prepared my quote. What I can do then is I can export my bill of materials if I want. Um, or you can actually use our tool to, you can export the bill of materials, which you could then import into another tool if, if you're using another tool. Um, or if you want to, you can use our documents feature. And our documents feature is where everything really comes together. Your topology diagram, your rack diagram, your inventory, and your quote will all kind of come together in a presentable fashion whether it's for internal purposes or for your customers. So I'll just give you guys a quick, quick preview of that and show you how you could export a rack diagram as well. So I'd create a new document here and say, I want to go ahead and generate a sales proposal. So there's all sorts of different templates. You can create your own templates. Um, I'm gonna use one that we've pre-built here. And what you'll see is that when I click there, um, it's automatically generated my proposal. Um, so I have my cover page here. Um, it put my company logo, our address, all the information that I had set up at the beginning of the project. So just the name, the customer name, all that kind of stuff is automatically pasted into the right spots. Uh, it gives me my proprietary statement on page two. Um, when I go to page three here, there's the letter, which you know how typically in a Word template, you might actually use this sort of uh, yellow highlight to kind of highlight different parts. In this case, if you just click in, you'll see that we have these dynamic, we call them dynamic placeholders, where you can essentially in your templates create all these tags based off the data of the project, and it'll automatically create your customer letter for you. So it makes it even lazy, even easier for you. If you happen to be lazy, like our sales guy here, Chris Mulcahy is, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but if you happen to be lazy or just want to be very efficient, 
all that stuff would automatically be populated for you in the right spots. Um, so keep scrolling down here, you know, a bit about us, all the stuff you might want to see in a proposal. And then we get to the meat of the project. So it's actually showing me, oh, here you go. I have my solution architecture with my topology diagram. I'm um, showing everything. I have my rack diagram that automatically been placed here. Um, if I wanted to show it something separately, I can always insert a page, switch it to like that, and then insert my rack again if I wanted to, if I wanted to maybe just highlight one of them. Um, and of course, like if I wanted to just show one rack at a time, what I could do is just space these out on my rack diagram and it would just show one, right? Because um, this is basically replicating what we have on the other side. Um, and I could add another topology diagram. Right now it looks pretty small here up here. But if we wanted to zoom into a certain area, we can actually just pin a diagram to a site. So I could say pin this to site one. Um, and you notice that it's just showing site one. I can insert another topology below and just show, okay, well now I want to pin this to the hotel tower A and so on and so forth. So you can kind of pin those, um, making it easier for printing. Um, and, you know, next page, my inventory, I can insert my entire inventory. I can in insert just the inventory from site one, for example, that we created together today. Um, it'll generate a list of all the different equipment. I can decide what I'm hiding, what I'm showing, and so on and so forth. Um, and then, you know, you get your, your pricing, your quote on you thrown out there, and your proposal, um, you know, acceptance, for example, if you want to send this to a customer. You can then share it with a customer. You can send them a live version of this by typing their email or sending them this link. Um, and when they click on it, they'll basically see exactly what we see, but a non-editable version. What's cool about it, though, is that they can still interact, zoom in, zoom out, and see that diagram. They can't modify anything. They can just kind of interact with it. They can sort things like tables and so on and so forth. Of course, you can also just print a PDF, bring it to them, or email them that uh, that PDF as well. Um, so sorry, it took a bit, bit of a sidetrack there, but I, I just like to show how everything comes back together. Um, with adding this Rafi feature, I think it just makes your proposal even stronger, and, and, and basically it will make you guys look even more professional in front of those customers, right? Um, so switching back over... Switching back over to um, our PowerPoint, there's a couple questions that came in, but I'll just ask that we hold off till the end. Um, so a couple couple more more things I want to show you. So I promised I would show you, well, what happens if um, I want to add a shelf to my diagram? Today, that functionality doesn't exist, but we actually have guys working on it as we speak. Um, I think within a, a couple weeks, we'll have that out for you. Um, I have a preview here, so you can see that we are working on it. And um, this is a preview that our UX designer actually, our, our UI designer actually put together. Um, so it's just a video here where that he's kind of created with mockups. Um, so I'll kind of play it and kind of walk you through it. So the idea here is that I click, I add a rack. Um, he's going to just show that, you know, if you use this, this new tool here where it's, it's a tool that you can use to create containers or shelves, you'd use that new tool. It's showing you, okay, well, that's what's available. He's just going to quickly auto generate. Okay. So here you are, you've created a rack diagram like I just showed you earlier, and now you want to add a, a container. So you would basically click on that tool, add that container. Once you've clicked, what you'll notice here is that um, it's letting you select between, and we need to come up with better names here, I'll be honest, but <laughs> uh, multiple items or reserved. The idea here is multiple items is that you want to drag multiple items on the same row. So, you know, for example, you might have a micro PC on the side and a mobile, a mobile radio next to it. Um, whatever it might be, you might have to, you might want to rack multiple things on the same, same sort of uh, horizontal line. Um, so this would allow you to do that. You'd create that container and then basically add items to it. Um, the other use case is that you might want to say that this space is reserved, for example. Um, you might say, I want to actually reserve this 3U space because it's um, currently being used by the customer for other purposes. Um, or you might want to say that it's for future expansion, whatever it might, might be. Oh, I sorry, I hit reset there by mistake. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so yeah, you might want to reserve a certain space and it would show up slightly differently, a different texture here, and you could give it a title. Um, and then the other thing too is you might want to also add a shelf. So notice here how he's clicked on include shelf. And what you'll see is it's slightly changed here, but when he actually releases, you'll see a, a better view of it. You can obviously say that that shelf takes up three use. There we have it. So you can see that now it's actually showing me that shelf. Um, and I can you know see the shelf. You'll be able to add, add it to your inventory if that's a, a part you want to purchase as well. Um, and you can also, someone just asked, can you customize that container? Absolutely. You'll be able to customize the size of it, um, you know, the shelf and so on and so forth. So this is something coming down the pipe. Of course, if you have the Rack View feature, this will be automatically added for you for free. There's no additional cost. Um, it's part of Rack View. It's something that we, we wanted to get done um, with the release, but you know, we, we didn't get a chance to do it. So we, we will follow up with it very quickly. Um, so that's coming down. Um, so again, multiple items being able to have shelves and reserve space on your Rack. All three of those items are being worked on as we speak. Um, I actually saw a quick demo of it earlier, and it, it's coming along quite well. So we'll be happy to release that. And of course, you'll see a message when that gets released. The other thing that we're working on is the rack diagrams area filtering. Um, so I showed you the areas earlier. If you remember, I had uh, my site one, and then I had you know hotel tower A and hotel tower B. Um, 
what we're going to do here is basically allow you to, well, we're going to basically automatically filter all the items in your inventory sync tool that I showed you earlier so that you can see um, which repeater belongs to which area. Because otherwise, if you name them all repeater, it's very hard to tell, well, what should go on which rack? Obviously, one rack belongs to one physical location, one physical site. So you want to be able to tell which one you're placing on which, because if you delete it on your topology diagram, you want to delete the right one and vice versa. Um, so that's a small thing, but it will be released um, very soon as well. We're working on that as we speak. Um, and the idea, again, is like, for example, this duplex here is just showing it's part of Area 51. Um, and you'll be able to see your basically all of your icons sorted by area. Um, and if you double click on it, you'll also be able to confirm which area it belongs to. Um, so that's coming very soon as well. We're working on it. Um, so that's that. Um, so that kind of finalizes the rack view, but I want to show you a couple more things that are coming up that, that, that might be of interest to you. And before I do that, I want to show you some of the stuff we just released. Um, so we did announce this in our last webinar, but if you didn't attend, um, some of the stuff that we've been working on, the things that I think are worth highlighting are um, the manufacturer icon libraries. So I showed you that earlier, but we've partnered with Motorola, Icom, Kenwood, and Hytera, and brought in all their icons into the, the um library if you work with other manufacturers other distributors whether they, they distribute ancillary products anything like that and you think we should work with them please let us know we're happy to partner with anyone um, and and kind of provide you with those icons to save you some time of course like i said you can create your own uh, but this just kind of makes things easier for you um the icon bundles feature that i showed you where you can actually drag out a pre-built network i think this is one of the most powerful features we have um, the fact that you can group these items, store them to your library, share them with your company, and then have your sales reps, for example, reutilize those can save a ton of time, right? And the nice thing is it's not like Invisio where once you've created a bundle, you can't unbundle things. With us, you can actually you know, manipulate icons one by one and connections and so on and so forth. Um, the quote tool, obviously, we talked about floor plan diagrams, which I didn't get to today, but basically it's the ability to show the physical coverage of devices. So whether it's, for example, things like cameras um, or things like repeaters showing the coverage, you'll be able to actually do that so that's been released as well you'll notice that when you create a new project you have the option to create a floor plan diagram or a topology diagram our plan is to merge everything back into one but for now they're separate um, as well as rack diagrams as well obviously that we talked about today um, other upcoming features that i just want to mention to you um, so a z index or z index if you're american i'm canadian so i say z um, but basically be able to send icons to front or to back and that's a request we've gotten a lot, especially with the floor plan diagram. So being able to move things forward and backwards. And um, if you want to overlay icons and things like that. Um, improvements to the D3M library. So I, we have actually assigned two, two of our employees here to really work on improving that D3M libraries. So creating newer icons, um, ones that are better suited to rack diagrams and kind of improving those. Um, and on the floor plan diagram side, um, there's two features we're currently working on. One of them being able to actually set a scale to your diagram. Um, and with that, if you think about it, if you've set a scale and you started showing, well, these are where all these different devices are placed, whether they're Wi-Fi points, repeaters, or whatnot, um, when you start creating connections on that on that actual floor plan diagram, you'll be able to start automatically calculating the distance of cable that you need. Um, so that becomes really interesting in the sense that um, we can start giving you like reports saying you'll need you know 800 foot cables and, and so on and so forth. So because we've added that scale, you'll be able to upload your map, scale your diagram, it really will become a very powerful tool for planning your installs. Um, so that's what's going on. So a couple, couple more things. We have a lot of other things, but these are just a few that I wanted to highlight that are coming up soon. So that's pretty much it on my end. Uh, just a couple quick, quick more quick reminders. If you're not a current customer, or if you are a current customer and you want to upgrade, remember that we are Motorola Solutions Co-op eligible. That means that we'll reimburse 100% of the cost of your subscription, up to $10,000 a year, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm almost sure that is the number. Um, but basically, you know, yeah, submit your submit your co-op claims to Motorola. They'll pay for this. So get your upgrades, get your new accounts. Um, if you are an ICOM uh, dealer, they'll actually reimburse the cost of a one-user subscription. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, one last thing, if you're considering, wondering whether or not this is worth it for you, we have an ROI calculator um, that we can follow up with. What we've seen from surveys we've done, and now we've done three or four different batches, um, on average, we're seeing people say that they save two to three hours in the design and engineering of, of a stage of every project they do. Um, so really powerful. So based off that stat, we basically created an ROI calculator to tell you, you know, if you have X amount of engineers and they cost you X amount per hour, and this is your cost for DCM project, what's your actual return on investment? Um, so if you want to use that, that tool, um, please feel free. It's, it's very powerful. Um, and we still have 100%. Every survey we've done, we've always gotten 100% would recommend it to a friend in the industry. Um, so we're, we're really happy with that. Um, so thank you very much for your time. We will st stick around to answer all the questions that came through. Um, if you're dropping off, just keep in mind, 
feel free to follow up with Chris Mulcahy if you have any questions um, or myself. We're always happy to help. Um, sales at dtermnetworks.com. Please feel free to request a private uh, webinar for your team. And we're happy to do it, help you convince your boss that he absolutely needs this. Um, and if you haven't done so yet, you need to start your free 14-day trial. There's no credit card required. Really easy to do. Just log into dtermnetworks.com. Create an account. It takes two minutes. We have a whole bunch of different tutorials in there to help you get started, but we're also happy to do training sessions as well. Um, so any questions at all, please feel free to, to, uh, to type them out right now. And Chris, maybe we'll take a second and go back on the ones that we, we missed because I was yeah. tr trying to keep things moving here. Yeah, guys, and, and thank you for I'm, – I'm seeing uh, a few people saying thank you here in the comments. We, we appreciate the, the encouragement. Uh, Jamie, thanks for the positive words here. Um, I did. I did see a couple uh, questions a little further back. Uh, John, I'm not sure if he's uh, if he's still on here, but asking if uh, if we'll be uh, sharing a recording of this. We uh, we do plan yep. to send something to you soon. Absolutely. So this is recorded, and then we'll be following up with everyone who registered. I'll be sending an email saying, "Here's the link if you want to share it with colleagues." So we'll definitely be doing that. And I see one other question here. Um, so is it in your roadmap to give the exact dimension of each component? Right now, we should add ports to change the size. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what you mean because it's hard without the context, Reza. Um, but basically, I'm just trying to think of where you would have asked that question. Um, yes, okay, so I see what he means. So when you're in the topology diagram, right now you're kind of stuck to the concept of ports. If you have four ports, your icon has to be four ports wide, which each actually represents 12.5 pixels. Um, we are actually going to be changing that. We're improving the way connections work, and it won't be tied to the actual um, to the actual ports anymore. You'll be able to resize the icon any way you want. Um, so that is something we'll be improving for sure. Is there anything else? Any other questions, Chris? That appears to be it. So we'll stick around for one or two more minutes, see if anything, anyone else has any other questions. Thank you very much for the positive feedback. I see a lot of people saying, good job, great presentation. Um, you guys do good work. I don't do any of the work. I just present it. So it's the developers in the back that are doing all the work. Um, Chris and I just kind of sit here and pretend. <laughs> really? He, he's being modest. He does a lot of work. But yeah, th thank you, everybody. for. Oh, uh... There's one last question that popped in there um, by Jovan. Um, is there a way to show connections in Rack? So there actually is not. It is something that we considered in the design, um, and we surveyed quite a few of our customers. And um, what we heard back was that it wasn't important in the Rack to actually see the connections. The connections are really meant to be seen in your topology and your logical diagram. Um, on the rack, it's more about how things are placed on a rack. We've also done a, re a lot of research with other rack diagramming tools, and we haven't seen any that actually do that. Um, but if it is something that you feel that there's a strong need for, Yovan, I do encourage you to just send me over maybe the examples of drawings you might have done or, or use cases. We're always happy to evaluate it. Um, you know, We talked about maybe having a front of the rack and a back of the rack view. It's something we could add to the roadmap. Um, right now, I haven't seen enough in, of a need. Um, but if, if again, if you do have use cases, I want to hear about those. I want to learn to, to see how we can, we can potentially do that. So one other question that came in, can you assign a label connection um, to connector types? Um, what type of connectors, termination connectors? Um, so you can actually... So can you, so what you can do is when you double click on an actual um, connection, you can actually see the properties um, and you can store those connectors. So I'm happy to show that very quickly here. Um, so what you could do here, for example, for this connection here, and I'll just turn off my areas tool. Um, if I double click on here, oh, zoom in a bit more. If I double click, I can actually start storing the connectors here. So I could show, and this doesn't make sense, it's a cloud to a switch, but let's say that it's an RJ245. A connector, you can show that there's a connector on connector one is that and connector two might be the other. Um, so you can actually display that on there if you'd like to very easily. Paul, um, thanks for your question, Paul. All right, so we'll probably call it there if, unless there's any last last second questions here. We'll wait another, another 30, 40 seconds. And just a final reminder that uh, Chris had it up on the screen there, sales at d3mnetworks.com. Feel free to email us there. Uh, yeah, go, go to the website, do a 14 day free trial if you haven't already. And, uh, and once you're, um, on the website using the app, you'll see that there's that chat bubble in the bottom right corner. So you can always get us there too. So thanks a lot guys. Uh, have a fantastic day and we appreciate your time. Bye.